Uh, welcome to Finchley College. This program is about setting out techniques and uh, how the different methods of setting out you can choose uh, depending on the situation. Uh, the first program is the setting out program. So the setting out program is the main program to use and the way it works is that you have your, your control um, axis plus north minus north plus east minus east. Supposing you've set up here with the easting of this point, with the easting of say 150 meters, northing of 250 meters, and you want to set out the point with the easting of say 170 meters and the northing of 290. So your first, your first act in everything you do on site is that you do a free station program and you will, ident uh, you will find out the east north z of the instrument, for example. East 150, north 250, height, for example, 0 0.5, or whatever it is. So once you find out where the instrument is, now you want to set out the point with these coordinates. So you go to the set out setting out program, it's called SO, setting out program. I want the setting out program. Um, the first thing is to ask you, it will say set job. Set station, set orientation, and then start. Now, because you've done a free station program, or if you not set up on a known point, we just set up somewhere, and we've used a free station program, the job is set. You originally have told what job you want to store data, so the job is set. You go to the job, for example, say, job North London. So everything is stored in the North London job, for example. Set the station is done, there will be a, there will be a tick in there, there will be a dot in there, done. Set the station is done because you've done the free station and the instrument knows the station. Set orientation is already done because the free station already automatically calculates the correct bearing for the instrument. So when you go to the setting up program, you can see already ticks in front of these three. These are done, so you don't need to worry. You go start. So you press enter for start. So when you go to start, the instrument at the moment may be pointing here, for example, and you want to set up this one. So the north is here. So the instrument draws the north parallel to the actual north. The instrument calculates the difference and angle between what it is now and the north. And it will add to that the angle bearing is calculated from the north to that point. So it will give you the actual angle to turn from where it's pointing at the moment to where it should be pointing to get to there. So for example, this is 20 degrees and this is 40 degrees. It will show you 60 degrees plus 60. I turn me 60 clockwise. So you turn 60 degrees clockwise from where it's pointing now. And then all the distance, it will show you, for example, the distance 12.9 uh, meters. So then you hold the target in here and you measure the distance. And the is if you're over reading, there will be a dimension here, arrow this way, come to you. Um, for example, one meter. If you're too short, it will be arrow that way, away from you, and it will tell you how far to go back. When you, when you measure the distance, when the difference between what is measuring and what it should be measuring is the same, then the difference is zero. When the difference is zero, that means you found the point that you're looking for. So that's when you put a pin in the ground, or you put a mark on the floor with the, cross, with the pen, or a pin in the ground in a feed. So that's how you do setting out. You simply you do a free station first, you find out where the instrument is set, and you simply give the coordinate of the point you want to set out to the instrument. So I want to set out point, for example, one with these coordinates. It will tell you simply how much to turn from where it's pointing at the moment and how much what distance to measure. So you turn the instrument until the difference in angle is zero between what it should be and what it, what it is now. And you measure the distance when the difference in what's measuring and what it should be measuring is the same zero, then that point is the point. So that is a typical setting out program that you use, and you'll be using that maybe you know many times uh, in a day. So that's that's the standard setting out program to set out points when you have a coordinate for them. Now there may be a different setting out program, it's a reference line program. How do we go reference line?
So a reference line program. The objective of the reference line program is that instead of you giving the coordinate of the point you want to set out, this is your station, this is the point to set out. So instead of giving the coordinate for this point to set out, you might tell where this point is in relation to another line. For example, I have a grid line. A, B, C, and then I might have a grid line 1, 2, 3. So the instrument is set up here, and I want to set out this point. And I know that this point, for example, is 2 meters from grid line B and 4 meters from grid line 2. So instead of giving the coordinate, I don't want to calculate the coordinate. I may not have this coordinate, or if the coordinate may be too big, I don't want to write it. I might use the reference line program instead. So I go to reference line program, and I say, let my start be this point, A1. Intersection is my first point. And A3 is my second point. First, second. Then I know, for example, the grids are, say, 6 meters apart, for example. For example, the grids are 6 meters apart. Then I know from this, this is my reference line now. So this is now my reference line. This is the start point, and the second point establishes a dimension. So what I need to tell the instrument, what is, how far is this point along the line, and how far is it off the line? So instead of giving the coordinate for this point, all I need to tell the instrument, along this line, from the first point, how far is it? So if I draw a right angle from there to the line, what is that dimension? And how far is it off the line? So with reference line, you will have offset, and you will have line. Sometimes instead of a line, they say chainage. Okay? So the first thing you tell, you say, you go to the reference line, you say, for example, chainage, or line. In this case, it's 6 meters plus 4, 10. And then offset, 6 meters plus 2, Eight. And then the instrument automatically calculates that coordinate and it will go to the setting out program. And then it will tell you what you need to turn. Again, we'll be pointing here. What you need to turn, what angle you need to turn, for example, 60 degrees, and what distance you need to measure to mark set out that point. Once you've set out that point, you may have another point here. Say this point. You want to set a discrete intersection. 6 plus 6, so the next point, the chain edge, so that's the first point, the next point. Chain edge line is 6 plus 6, 12. Offset, 6 plus 6, 12. So then say, you simply go next point, you click on next point, and it says go back to chain line and offset. It says, what is your line and offset? You say, my line is 12 meters, 6 plus 6 is 12. My answer is 6 plus 6 is 12. And then the instrument turns, we say, depending where it is, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, no matter where you set up, it will calculate what angle you need to turn from here to get to those. So from here, it will calculate that bearing, or from here, that bearing, or from here, that bearing. Depending where it's set up, it will calculate the bearing you need to turn to get to that point, and so automatically reverse back to setting out program. And you set out that point. So it's very easy. You don't need to work out coordinates for these. You don't need to tell the instrument coordinates for these. You just need to tell, establish a reference line and just say how far are they along the line and off the line. Now usually, what we do with these, when we choose a reference line, we try to make a reference line to the left of the points and below the points because what happens? So, in a standard reference line, this is your first, this is your second, 
This is the direction of the line. This is plus line. This will be a minus line. This will be plus offset. This will be minus offset. So if I was set up in here first, so in relation to if the point happened to be here, I want to set out this point. The line is plus, for example, 10 meters. The offset, for example, is 2, then minus 2. So at this point, line is 10, offset is minus 2, because it's to the left of the line. If I was setting out the point in here, and say the line was, say, 15 meters, offset is, say, 3, would be plus 3. So offset is plus 3, line is 15, for example, that's 15 meters from the start. So you've got 15 meters and 3 meters. 10 meters minus 2. So you've got to be aware of when you choose your reference line, where these points are on the side of it. Is it points on the right side will have a plus offset, points on the left side of the reference line will have a minus offset. So when you go and you choose the line and offset, you must make sure you put the correct sign. You don't just put 2 meters, it's minus 2, 2 meters to the left. Again, if a point was here, Below this, the line will be a minus, say, minus 4, and the offset will be minus, say, 5, for example. So the line is minus 4, offset is minus 5. It's 4 meters below this way, and it's 5 meters to this way. So one of the, the reasons is that when we choose the reference line, we try to choose it so that all these points end up to the right, so I don't have negative points. So I make my reference line in a way that everything I want to set up is to the right, and above this. So every point will have a plus line. Line is plus, offset is plus. Line is plus, offset is plus. So I'll try to avoid negatives if, it, if I can. If I can't do it, doesn't matter. I just have to remember that if the point is this side, I have to choose the offset is minus offset. I have to remember that. And when I enter it in the instrument, enter negative. Now, the reference line, this is the simple reference line for two dimensions. You can also have a three-dimensional reference line. Well, the instrument also tells you the height. So if you've established say, the point I want to set out as, for example, uh, three meters below or two meters up, the instrument will also tell you how much you need to go up or down. Uh, when you establish the first point, if you establish the three coordinates, east, north, z, east, north, z, it's based on the z, when you slide to a point, it will also, when you slide to the point, uh, and it will tell you how much you need to go up or down to get to that point level-wise, to get the correct level. So if this point, um, I can tell it, it needs to go up half a meter in relation to this, all is related to the first point level. That is the key. The level of the first point establishes the level. So when I'm sitting out, you can, not only I can tell it how, how far to go line and change it, offset, I can also tell it how much to go up or down, or it will tell me how much to go up or down to get to that particular height that I want to set up. 